Good evening and welcome to Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms. This is Raf streaming to you live high above the keep in the hot air balloon. Tonight I have Nindorf with me and a very special guest, JHW3D. How you doing, guys? Doing well. Doing great. How are y'all? You know, uh, there's, I was just uh, joking around before the stream. Uh, we got the air conditioning fired up full blast right now. Um, and I've been relegated to the basement for podcasting. Um, so, uh, a bit chilly, but you know, I guess that's a, that's a first world problem. So, uh, <laughs> I really shouldn't complain. Um, Nindorf, what's going on in your world this week? Ah, uh, you know, things like T-ball and soccer with the gen ones. That's where I've been at. Oh yeah. It's probably hitting full stream now that it's summertime, huh? Exactly. All right, uh, JHW3D. Why don't you go ahead and give a? Uh, you've been a you know a, a recurring regular on the, on the YouTube streams, and uh, we were actually trading uh, uh, pages, the Eternal page, what Eternal story? I don't know, whatever it's called. Uh, we were we were trading uh, pages this morning, and I was asking you about catching the stream tonight, and you're like, yeah, looking forward to chatting about DFK Arena. Uh, you offered to battle, and I said, all right, well, why don't we <laughs> have you come on? Um, and uh, so, yeah, uh, go ahead and maybe uh, tell us about how you got into the game and a little bit about yourself. Well, I think I got into it back in around November of last year. And, uh, well, I didn't take it that serious when I found it. I just threw like a couple hundred bucks into the gardens because I think back in that time, I was trying to get into Neo Tokyo, if y'all know like Alex Becker and all that Neo Tokyo ah, yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I didn't take it that serious, and then I came back to it like in January and like really delved into it, and I was like, wow, this game, they actually have something going really good here with like the NFTs and and the DeFi and bringing it all together and building a game on top of it and. So after that, I started uh, accumulating heroes and stacking jewel and uh, nice. farmed in the gardens. Nice. Well, uh, we're we're glad to have you. And so, um, Nindorf, why don't you go ahead and take us into the question of the day? Yeah, absolutely. Um, would an episode wouldn't be complete without that? So, uh, I guess the question today is: um, Are you? Is there anything you're buying? Any? Any items in the game on this? I'll call it the dip of dips, maybe. Uh, JHW3D, why don't you go first? Lately, I've been trying to to uh, stack away stamina potions since they're actually like three or four jewel, cheap in real life uh, dollars. Yeah, yeah, like cheap yeah. in real life dollars. I remember they used to be like twenty dollars in USD for one. So I was like, oh man, stack these Big. up now and later on. Dude, yeah, that's a good yeah. strategy. Absolutely. Especially with um, how the XP bars keep going and going. Like, it takes 12,000 XP, and then the next one's like 16,000 XP. So it's going to take a lot more potions later on, so I'm just stacking those away. What's your highest level hero? Uh, Right now, I'm level 8. Nice. All, All right. right. That's me. That's where I'm at as well. Uh, no, I have one level 9, I which I, I stamp on it to get there. Um, Nindorf, uh, what are you buying? Well, you know, I, kind of in that same vein, I've been I've been contemplating buying Jewel, uh, mm-hmm. or sorry, Jewel Gold rather. I, gold? I think, uh-huh. yeah, um, I, you know, you, you think of some of the conversations that we've had and you've heard in these AMAs going on. Uh, I'm pretty sure that every little thing that we do in the future is going to require gold. You know, like you kind of look at the stone carver, right? He comes out now every once in a while, apparently. I don't, I'm not sure what that's about, but uh, every potion or every Every, every other there, day, if it's raining, um, it's got to be an odd date of the month. and Right. Yeah. 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 Every fourth But season. there's a lot of gold. Those yeah. things cost a lot of gold, man. Yeah, I know. And it's actually, you know, it's it's easier now to get gold for sure. Now that there's a training quest. Um, but it, you know, for a while there, it was kind of a sort of slim pickings and, and with people with stamp still very valuable. It's, I, I kind of think 
I'm I'm in the gold world. I, I almost want to buy a bunch, and you know, that maybe will segue me into uh, another topic here. What about you, Raph? What are you buying? Anything? I yeah, my my buys are well hero related. I've been watching uh, the Dragoon market for a long time. Um, you know, really, actually, for probably a couple months now, um, since we you know started developing uh, the the balanced uh, or the the hero combat page on on the website, uh, you know, vitality and endurance are my two areas of weakness. And you know, while I was looking at paladins, they didn't quite fit my fancy, um, and so I actually have been having alerts for dragoons out there for a long time. Had my eye on one. Um, and actually, you know, if, if you've seen, if you've been watching the Dragoon market, um, there's a, a, a Discord user by the name of Lord Baca out there, and he's, I feel like he's got a corner on the Dragoon market, and I thought, you know, what the heck, I'll just see if he, well, that was his in-game name, so I was like, oh, I'll see if he's on Discord. Uh, chatted him up this week, and, you know, the with Jewel kind of fluctuating in price, the, the price in Jewel has been coming down. Um, and I, I messaged him last night. I was like, Hey, you looking to make, looking to make a deal. Um, and so I, I pulled the trigger on a, a Dragoon. Maybe I'll, uh, uh, do a reveal when I play DFK arena later. Um, he is only level one though. So, <laughs> um, you'll have to go easy on me, DHW. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Nindorf, why don't you go ahead and, um, uh, you know, jump in, jump into your gold conversation I, i'm really curious to, uh, to to hear what you got here yeah so you know I, i've kind of been watching uh, you know as we mentioned you know stamina potions are important so i've kind of been watching those prices and some of the gold prices and i, I don't even really remember how i got into this conversation but uh another one of our discord members uh ben friend i was i was i'll give him a little shout out here because he's kind of filling me in on some of the details but uh basically long story short there's only about thirteen thousand dollars, like U.S. dollars worth of liquidity, in the jewel gold pair at the trader. So it's actually a very small amount. Um, mm. And if you're a large wallet looking to buy tens or you know maybe a hundred or more of stamina potions, that means you have to buy an absolute ton of gold. Um, and, and so basically, what what ended up happening to him to Ben was he was saying that he's purchasing like, I don't know, it was like millions of gold over the course of a month. And effectively he would launch a, a, a buy order for 20,000 gold. And he, he was basically describing a system where there are, there are bots watching low liquidity pairs and they will step in and front run your order. So basically his 20,000 jewel or gold order would get, uh, canceled because of the the slippage because mm-hmm. a bot would buy it ahead of him. Yeah. But since he actually wanted it and the price only then turned around and went up by like one and a half or so percent, he'd reissue his buy. You know, he but he'd have to spend one and a half percent more to to buy that same twenty thousand gold. And then what would happen as soon as his order completed, the bot would sell the twenty thousand back because his buy then increased the price yet again another one and a half percent. So long story short. He was. This was happening to him several times a day, where bots were scraping him one or two percent on his gold purchases, pretty much with you know without stop. And so, it kind of got me thinking. You know, I was sitting on you know sixty thousand gold ish because um, I wasn't sure when I want to buy that second gold egg. So I was like, you know what? Actually, why don't I just pop that with some jewel into a, the jewel gold pair? Now it's it's not an incentivized pair, so you don't get extra rewards. But you know it's still a dex, right? You know, you're still going to profit. You're still going to earn on the 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 dex movement, right? Exactly. So now I think my new strategy is, you know, maybe once a day, I'm gonna just gonna take my training quest uh, gold, scrape it with some jewel, and just drop it in as liquidity every single day until I know what to do with my gold. Um, and I think you know if we can get a bunch more people out there providing liquidity to gold um maybe we can start to kind of you know head that off a little bit so that people aren't paying basically just uh, you know scraping off the top of bots again it's kind of another one of those deals right yeah yeah does it say what the yield is um i 
not see that's what I gotta you know I wanted to you know dip my toe in a bit here and see um, I'm not sure I was kind of I clicked on the uh, DFK tracker hoping that it's you know it's uh it's scanning of your transactions would find it but it's purely focused on the gardens um, which you know if you just have LP tokens it's just a normal dex and not the actual garden so I gotta figure out a way to determine how much you know we're making by depositing that liquidity. Yeah. Um, you so know, that's, that'll be maybe in a future episode I can fill you guys in on what I find. I I think there's probably a lot of interest in this topic, um, and I need to spend a lot more time, you know, putting <laughs> my brain power to actually trying to to f- figure out and understand this. I think you know at a at a high level I'm I'm following what you're saying and I'm and I'm really intrigued. Um, mm-hmm. We have Jamie on on YouTube also asking a question, mentioning that. In episode 30, we talked about building versus buying potions. I think we could almost maybe create a, a channel over in YouTube about, you know, things related to uh, kind of like deep diving the marketplace like this. Um, so maybe that's something that, you know, we'll put um, out out there on, on Discord. I, I think there's enough people wanting to talk about it in, in general chat or, you know, whether it's side messages like you're talking about. And I, I think, you know, whether it's, you know, building a liquidity pool or, or jumping into, you know, like a, I'll call it an alt liquidity pool um, or, you know, talking about, you know, the, the buying versus building. I remember a few days ago there was someone who was monitoring the, the price of gold and the price of, of potions or stamp pots and I think, you know, made a... a a reasonable play um to gain some advantage there and i think that's something that you know you you got to definitely be online um and aware of what's happening and and have your wits about you but i I think there's uh it's it's funny how you know traditionally the game started out in like the there's just a the hero market and the gardens um and that's that's how you earn earn from the game and now there's all these like alternative ways that that you can earn from the game as well that i that i think are really neat yeah, I think that's a. I, you're absolutely right, and you know that's kind of a, a little preview. I've been working a little bit on the side here to re- release a new um, market data page on the site, so that and it'll kind of give you that. Uh, here's the cost to produce a stamp pot versus here's the cost to buy. Here's the constituent pieces. Um, you know, I'm working on putting that page together for basically all the I call them recipes in the game whether it be the stone carving or the alchemist. Uh, so that's coming along nicely. So, you know, listeners, you know, look forward to that here in the near future. Um, hopefully we can get you some of that data on, you know, here's the current jewel price and the U.S. dollar price to continue to build or to buy. And then maybe then with that data out there, it's a little easier to see uh, those those deltas where, you know, if it's 10% difference in those two, maybe there is an arbitrage opportunity. Uh and then I think also I'll probably with that, I'll probably just put links in on all those items to a uh, deck screener. I have, I've kind of gotten really used to having deck screener up at all time and just, you know, checking it periodically to see how are these tokens doing over time. Um, and then uh, maybe the next thing I'll say is, you know, maybe this is my first, you know, getting this out to the community, but maybe people would be interested. You know, we have this nice alert system where we can send out Discord DMs. You know, maybe people would be interested in setting, you know, price alerts for, you know, values of different tokens. Um, oh, so that might be man. a feature that we could we could start to provide you guys. And if you want to say, hey, look, if stamp pots ever go below, you know, three point three jewel, shoot me a DM. You know, so what do you, you know, let us know what you guys think. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Um, and you know that actually, I think segues us nicely let's go go ahead and rearrange topics a little bit we'll do dfk arena a little later um today uh we had the chance to to chat with Sunbear online about the the grant program and if you guys aren't aware of that you can go to uh there's a new website um a kingdom builder program i'm gonna go ahead and jump over onto it on youtube um so the kingdom builder program and there are grant submissions for the different applications out there of what people are going for. And, you know, one of the things that we, you know, that's really neat is the DeFi Kingdoms team has a consultation uh, set up. And so we reached out to Sunbear, got back to me right away. 
Um, and we chatted with him this afternoon. Nindorf, what were your kind of, you know, your preliminary takeaways um, from, from that meeting? Yeah, I think, you know, first and foremost, it's, it's clear to me that you know, he's doing a really good job trying to feel out everybody and try to get, you know, it, I think it's as much as them trying to learn from us as we are from them, which is great. Uh, this is a new project. You know, the first iteration maybe didn't go as way as they'd hoped, um, but I have a lot more confidence in this iteration. I think that their system is much improved, and I think that they're learning a lot about what we as the you know, developers in their community want to provide. And so, you know, I thought it was really interesting, you know, that there's some things that, you know, we as developers might ask for that's not necessarily monetary. And I right. don't know that they really expected that. So I think that was kind of something that maybe took them off by surprise a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Dive, diving into that one specifically, you know, we talked about um, the release of the, the Crystal Veil vale, Crystal vale Heroes, um, you know, I can't even pretend that, that I helped. Um, <laughs> had you... Uh um, in a bit of a tizzy trying to react to, you know, developing the site. And I, I think the, the thing that's important for them to know is, you know, in a lot of these cases, there's hobbyists working on developing these, these outside platforms. And so, you know, we're, we're asking if it would be possible for us to get early access to that information um, and time with the development team. And that very much seemed like something that was on the table. I think it was also very clear that, that's really only on the table if the community approves this style of, of grant. Um, and so, you know, we'll probably be asking our Discord and YouTube community out there um, to to help us and, you know, do some promotions where you, you can. And, and ultimately, uh, when it comes time for it, uh, voting. Um, and of course, we'd also love your feedback, just as you've helped us you know, decide on features for the site. We'd also love your feedback on, you know, some possible areas of, of where we could continue to develop into. Um, and, and like you said, Nindorf, you know, we're going to be pretty transparent with what we're asking for, uh, where those funds would go. You know, we, we believe in a, a model that has uh, a split to it where there's going to be free content and premium content. And we think that that's, uh, you know, healthy for helping us support the more complex items um, and and the ongoing um, upkeep costs for for the website and and our, our time too. So I'm really looking forward to it. It was overall as a you know a, a really invigorating conversation, um, and we'll start to release some information. I think generally speaking. Um, what we're looking uh, to focus on, and I hope this is, you know, no surprise to, to anyone in our Discord, but we, we really care about the future of combat um, and, and maybe even pets, too. Um, that was one thing that, you know, stuck out to me about the conversation is how bullish Sun Bear was on um, pets. He was almost surprised that no one has asked. It seemed like he was surprised that no one has asked questions about pets yet. Um, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and give him the credit I mean, he had a, a great idea. He's like, well, would you guys be interested in, like, people from the DeFi Kingdoms team uh, jumping on a podcast to talk about uh, pets, you know, near the, near the release date? Um, we're like, heck, yes, we would. That sounds awesome. Yeah, right. Um, so I, while we, we have you here on stream, uh, JHW3D, what are your thoughts? Um, have you had a chance to, to dive into the Kingdom Building Program website? Um, and then what are your thoughts based on our, our conversation with Sunbear? Um, I haven't, I haven't looked at it that closely, but I do think in general, uh, a lot of the best tools for DFK are built by like community members like that, uh, that DF King site and the DFK Tavern site and the ones that like give you data about the, uh, hero stats and pvp percentage and then that lineage tracer and then the of course the stuff y'all built with the hero matching tool mm -hmm. it's like there's just so many talented people contributing and I... uh yeah they just need a way to kind of pull them all in the same have them all pulling in the same direction and all kind of connected together yeah that's a good point I think we, we kind of brought that up, too, in a sense that there's all these resources out there. And, you know, whether they're you know, similar products or very different products, I don't think it matters. I, th I think it's just, you know, we want 
We want the community to know here are all the tools that are available to you to help you navigate this game and to be profitable, you know, to make the right decisions and not, you know, have half in half of the information. So I think that's kind of, you know, Raph, that's kind of been one of our mottos going all along, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it very much fits the theme of, uh, you know, crypto, which is very open community based and, you know, looking for that, that feedback and development. So I, I absolutely believe in a, you know, rising tide raises all ships kind of um, situation. And, you know, I, I think so. I encourage everyone to go check out uh, the website here. It is um, builddefikingdoms.com. I'll go ahead and throw this into YouTube. I should have done that earlier. Um, and you can link your Discord and, and log in through your Discord. So they make it really straightforward. Um, and then it's, it's essentially like a community forum. Um, and so you can have conversation with people who are submitting their grant proposals or give them comments on it. Um, so this is meant to be that that kind of that first iteration conversation starter um, before things go to the vote. Um, and then also I, there's a, f a few on here that the DeFi Kingdoms community, or excuse me, uh, the DeFi Kingdoms dev team has also... Um, trying to find the one uh they they've actually given their their rating form and so you know they have a lot more clear rating form of what their expectations are uh of what they're hoping to achieve so um yeah so much more clarity great iteration really excited about the program um and you know we're like you've been saying Nindorf, you know we're here to build for you guys so help us out we we'd love to know what you want to see next um uh, maybe give us some ideas on on combat i think that's the area or the, the our natural shift um yeah so we'd love to know all right well um let's talk about gfk arena uh jhw3d maybe give us a, a brief overview dfk arena um have you've been playing a little bit um how does the combat system work and uh, what do you like about it so far I guess the way it works is you have like your eight hero stats and you have one verse one one verse one hero and so it like rolls one of the eight stats and whoever is higher does that amount of damage to the other person and so it takes into account your HP and so that's kind of where the meta around paladins and dragoons has come from because they have the highest HP so like they're already at a huge advantage compared to uh, wizards or archers and like they're almost unplayable because you can't go in there with an archer that's like 300 HP right. and go against somebody that's 500 HP because even if you roll good and your stats are good and you do deal damage you're just starting back so far yeah so it iterates by randomly comparing the same stat on both heroes and so it'll compare agility between hero one and hero two and then i i believe it does the the damage of the greater stat against the other hero and so if i have a 30 agility and you have a 20 agility it would do 30 damage to you but if i'm running with a thief who has 200 hp and you're running with a paladin who has 500 HP, um, you know, you could take a lot more agility hits than I could. And, you know, they, it, I, you know, they've kind of balanced the game around hero stats. And so, you know, you would expect the different classes. If you have two heroes of the same level, you know, it's not like dark knights are always going to win from just a pure stat basis and so that's where that that health boost um has really developed a, a, a meta game uh, i'll call it and while it's it certainly has uh you know pigeon pigeonholed the um the dfk arena into you know being very tank focused i i actually think that you know, this is creating a metagame and a creation of a metagame, I, I think overall is a healthy thing. And I'm hoping for, you know, some balancing features in the future. Like right now, for example, um, mana isn't being calculated into, um, into the battle at all. 
Um, and so I, I think that would be a, a really neat way um, to help balance or level out the playing field. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed is that, you know, PJ heroes, they have a huge advantage because if you look at, you know, two heroes being compared at, at similar levels and they have the, the battle mechanisms broken out into you can battle between levels zero and four, between five and nine, um, between 10 and 14, so on and so forth. And so, you know, if, if you have two level nine heroes, one of them went on PJ, one of them didn't, that's 15 more points. Uh, depending on where you place those those points, you could win almost every stat battle, um, depending on what kind of class you're going up against. So, Nindorf, um, you have not played, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, I think you kind of nailed it when I started to hear that it was HP based. Uh, I looked over my you know crew here, and I was just looking through it now as you guys as you were chatting. Uh, my hero that has the most hit points is 400, and it's a level eight PJ wizard. So I was like, Ooh. <laughs> like my highest hit point hero is 400. So I I have not participated because my heroes are honestly a lot of mine are in the magic category. My number two is my level nine rare summoner. Yeah, he's got 397. So I got tons of intelligence, you know, a, you know, a lot of mana. But unfortunately, in the current iteration, like I don't get to count any of that. So that's that's kind of what's kept me away, honestly, is that I just don't feel like I have the right heroes in my wallet. Hmm. Yeah, I, I I played a few times, and I have enough tanks to, I guess, keep me honest. But I've been playing at what I call the, affectionately called the $5 blackjack table, um, which is the, the lowest bet <laughs> amount. And, you know, you can bet at three different gold increments. And so those uh, those betting increments, let me bring that up, are right now 901 gold, uh, 9,000 gold, and 90,000 gold, and 900,000 gold and change. So um, I don't know what the math is on that real quick, but um, that's a lot of gold to bet. So I've been playing on, on, the, on the cheap end, which is probably more like dollar blackjack tables. Um, yeah, how about you, uh, JHW3D? Where, where are you uh, focusing your, your time on battles right now? I think they uh, divided it to where the it adjusts itself based on the price of gold to be oh. one dollar, ten dollars, and a hundred dollars. Oh, okay. nice! So like the nine hundred is like a one dollar. One dollar, cool. Because like I don't know, a week ago it was only like three hundred, or like it it it's like a dynamic adjustment. Got it, got it. Oh, that's I like that a lot. So one dollar, ten hundred thousand. Woo, woof. That's, uh, yeah. that's I don't. I don't think I've ever even seen anyone do the high level one. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd be a little, I'd be a little scared if you're clicking that button. You know, you have a a strong hero, so <laughs> you're gonna yeah. see like a mythic dread knight or something, uh, yeah, plowing, right? Yeah. Plowing through. I've seen a few, a few uh, monsters out there. I saw, like the first day that it came out, some guy was in there that had a mythic dragoon <laughs> it was like i think it was level nine so he was at the top of his bracket so he's just you know, in that little chunk yeah and, and like they have a cooldown where you can only send your hero out there like once per hour or once every two hours or something like that but the first day it didn't have that cooldown oh man <laughs> so he was just oh, wrecking everybody <laughs> oh, just well, that's hilarious out. That's great. But that helped, that helped out a little bit. Like after that, they started putting that cooldown thing, so more people can have a chance to throw out some. So, do you guys think bad. that this is a like? I think Raph, you were alluding to this, but this seems like this is a very good preview of what the game itself will actually bring, right? Like, you know, that tells me that even so, I have a I have a legendary warrior knight that was PJ survivor, right, mm -hmm. and. He's level seven, so he's you know he's mid range, um, but he's only has three hundred and seventy health, and it's like you know his stats are decent because of PJ, but I'm like wow maybe that hero is actually not worth holding if you know you start to think if the five hundred HP heroes in a similar level if that's a if that's actually common, you know I think this is kind of a new way that I haven't really been gauging heroes in the past. You know I've not really looked at yeah. mana and health a lot. I mean, it's absolutely a, a new way to value heroes, and 
I'm sure it's going to affect the market in the future. Um, I actually love that there is a, a third party version of battling. I think that's going to be super healthy for the DFK team. Um, you know, just being able to have so, a small private company spin something out and presumably make faster changes um, to a combat system and a combat style and allowing, you know, DGENs out there <laughs> in, in the community space like myself, uh, you know, jump in and play and actually wager your hard-earned tokens um and i so i i'm i'm really excited about it i while i'm you know a, a bit out on the the current meta i still think it's really neat and unique that there is a meta that's developing and i wouldn't be surprised if it is it could affect the marketplace values uh, soon so there are and i mean probably isn't yet there are are just under three thousand games played right now um, and so when you compare that to the community base, it's it's probably not a lot, but I, I bet it's affecting the high end hero market. I felt like it when I was buying dragoons, that's for sure. <laughs> All I right. just I did a real quick here. I, I just did a tavern search um, for heroes that have over five hundred HP while we were at it, and uh, the the cheapest one is three hundred and fifty jewel, and it's a uncommon warrior PJ survivor. So there you have it, five hundred health and above starting to get up there in cost yeah so just that's yeah a, just like we said high-end market it's making a difference yeah. those atonement crystals help out i th i gave all my guys like um the you know the atonement crystal that gives right. you plus 35 hp or whatever right oh yeah and then the lesser one uh, uh, can like you do can you double HP. up can you do atonement the regular atonement and then the lesser as well yeah, you can only do one of each, but if you one do of both each, of though. Them, okay, so, uh, so you can do both of them. All right. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes a difference. For sure. At, yeah, at these levels, I mean, with... Five, I gotta consider that. I think I'm holding a couple of those yet. I'll have to think about that. Yeah. Or maybe an opportunity for arbitrage. If you're sitting on a few, want to sell them? That's yeah. right. I don't I'm have a... that you can even still buy them, since I thought there was, like, a limited amount. Yeah ever created i haven't used mine well i i've used one for my uh for my dark knight that's the you know the prized possession of my hero stable at the moment <laughs> all right oh, yeah. well jhw3d how about we um go ahead and, and jump on do a live battle i have dfk arena up right now um uh, let's go ahead and do uh the one dollar table i'll let you pick uh, do you want to go with uh, level zero through four or five through nine? Five through nine. I don't. I don't think I even have a uh, <laughs> zero through four. <laughs> Very All nice. Right. You gotta do some summoning. Where, where you been? Yeah, <laughs> I just get the uh, guys who already have the PJ badge. Uh, ah, you've been collecting so a bunch of those. <laughs> they're already so far ahead. It's like. It's not even worth dealing with to like raise raise one from scratch. Oh at yeah, least at, at least at this point, it's not. It takes a lot of time and energy. All right, so right now I I'll go ahead and create a game, um, and then I'll let you know when it's created, and then whatever pops up. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of activity on the marketplace right now, so let's just get. Oh, I'll have you join that first one that pops up for you. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll battle each other. All right. Got it pulled up too. All right, just clicked create, and I'm clicking uh, the MetaMask pop-up to confirm. Maybe we can run through a few battles here. I see it. All right. Hopefully no one else jumps into it. <laughs> it seems a little slow tonight. No, maybe not. Last game was five minutes ago. And so there is a... Um, I don't know, what would you call it? Like a timer or... Uh, make sure that you're not AFK. So once you create a game... So I see challengers awaiting. I'm going to go ahead and click through MetaMask now. All right, so 
I, you know, I, and I threw this out in Discord um, about a month ago. I have not forgotten. I would love to do a dual system. The one thing I, I don't feel like would be conducive of that right now is that. Whoa, I got an error. So my thing is going. Yeah, it popped up and then it went white screen on me. Application error, client side. Exception has occurred. See browser console for more information. That is, uh, that's not good. That, uh, it's going to make it. I see. I'm watching. All right. You're watching what's going on, man. How are you watching it? I don't know. I'm, I'm I mean, I'm watching it on my own because I'm not watching the stream. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, it's pretty evenly matched at the moment. I decided to, uh, to zig, uh, when everyone I else see is that. zagging Ooh. and I, I brought the summoner. So you guys, you guys, okay. So you guys got to do a, a live, um, live I commentary. Do have a replay yeah. system. Oh, oh, it's, it's pretty close. The paladin's got a little bit of an edge at the moment, but it's fading. Ooh. Uh oh. Oh, he's. Oh man, this is this is pretty cool. All right, now that I've actually seen. Oh, and there they it evenly is. matched, but the HP is like the difference. Yeah. They need a way to. Yeah, like, I don't even know how you balance that. All right, so I, I assume you won. Um, but it was close, though. All nice right. zig. If you can restore the site, they have a thing that says "Show Game." Uh huh. And yeah. it, show, it shows a replay. I clicked that, and I I got the same application error here on YouTube. So I mean, this is for our YouTube like, friends out there. This has to be wildly disappointing, um, <laughs> and absolutely horrible content. Um, well, you want to try one? <laughs> let's try one more, and we'll pivot quickly. And I'll just close my browser um, if I if I can't show my screen anymore. Um, so you want, you want to do one more? I'll uh, I'll create the next game. Do you need to Do you need to try like a different browser, like Chrome or Firefox or Brave or a different one? Um, you know that would be the right thing to do. Um, <laughs> but I'm uh I'm a little pot committed here with uh the way that OBS stream works. Um, so it take me a uh, a while to get it back up and ready to go for for YouTube. So I have a. I have a level eight archer who, who's uh, oh, don't, don't tell my me. next best guy. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I want to test out my summoner. You guys are making me jealous. I might have I, to try it, dude. It's, Although I, I have no gold. All my I, golds in the liquidity pool. <laughs> yeah. Well, here I. If you could, I would earned a little bit of gold here and there. I don't know. Maybe I'm about even now uh, with that last battle. All right. I created a. All right. Uh, I got it popped up. I'm joining it. Yeah, another game went on when when we were doing ours. So I guess there's Does that page auto refresh, or do you need to keep hitting refresh? Do you guys know? I think it auto refreshes. Okay. All right. So I guess uh, while I'm clicking confirm, uh, YouTube friends out there, go ahead and jump into beta.dfkarena.com. Um, I'm going to wait a couple seconds um, because there's a bit of a stream delay. And that way, if my browser is entirely ineffective, uh, you'll be able to, to jump on and watch along just like uh, Nindorf is. So, um, Nindorf, I might even have you. And so, actually, this is one of the things we talked about um, with, yeah, with Sunbear color, today color. Uh, is that I would this would be kind of my pipe dream, but I'd actually like love for DFK battling to become so popular that it, you know, almost turns into an esport of sorts. And I'd love to, to actually commentate games. Like I, I think that would just be absolutely oh, that would be awesome. uh, fun. So, uh, you know, maybe nine door, if you can give us, uh, the, the preview here, I'll click the control sure. button. Um, uh, if I can find it, I don't see your new match yet at the top I'm of the I'm guessing list. it I'm hasn't quite started yet. I just clicked confirm just so our 
our YouTube listeners who are on delay uh, could jump onto the website there if they'd like. Starting. Yeah, I, I uh, had another well, there application it is. error. Yeah, this, if you guys have ever watched Holy Moly, where they're announcing that, that's kind of how I envision this would go. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh, Raph with the first strike. This is nice. Oh, I see your archer there. Bold strategy. I'm not, I, I don't keep, I'm still learning this. This is crazy. Keep rolling decks. <laughs> so it's pure random, right, on the rolls? It's yeah. pure random on the rolls, that's for sure. They're about nice. even now. We're about down to the lower 200s of HP. Yep. Ooh, a couple in a row from the archer. Drops the Dark Knight. Who's going to be the first Dream. to get under half health? Ooh... Dark Knight's at 50. Archer just dropped to 50. Oh, this is cool. I like this. Well, you're both about 40%. This this is going to be the uh, final strike. I have a feeling you guys. Strength got me. Too many strengths in a row. Oh, vitality, <laughs> strength. Yeah. Oh, yep. There it goes. Strength, strength, strength. Oh. <laughs> well, I've been uh, waiting on pins and needles because uh, my yeah, I should have restarted the browser like you suggested. Nice. Maybe we can at least get the replays to work. I I could not. I or I tried. Actually, it's it's kind of funny. So um, and they talked about they brought the guy on on sandwiches, sandwich punches podcast. Um, essentially, the entire calculation is done instantaneously. Uh, you know. Uh, you know they, they do the entire combat all at once and they they draw it out for our amusement um and so actually while i was clicking refresh i uh could see kind of the the results the final results of the game which is kind of funny uh, so i was trying not to uh spoil anything and then when i clicked oh, show yeah. game um it kept uh giving me an application error so uh i guess you know probably an issue i can uh report and hopefully fixed by just refreshing my browser. Uh, for those of you out there on YouTube, I hope this wasn't um, just absolutely horrid. So um, mm -hmm. it, go check it out. Like like you're saying, Nightdorf, um, it, it actually is a lot of fun. Um, throw me some ideas, community out there. Um, I would absolutely love to have, uh, like I said, we were drawing up a tournament. Um, the thing that I guess worries me about that is that you know, you can't really control or schedule your matches. Um, and so you can't set a private match at this point in time. Um, and so it could be a, a bit weird uh, to schedule a match with uh, a few different people. But if there's enough folks that really want us to try to manage a tournament uh, through this system, I'd love to do it. What we'd probably do is bet at the lowest uh, gold level. So the $1 bet on everything. And then we would have people actually submit um, jewels. So we were thinking about... Uh, hosting a tournament where it'd be five five jewel entry um you know we would uh you know you'd place one through or uh, one through four would you know get at least their money back in in the case of four um and then we were gonna uh you know give some to charity and give some um to the site uh to to cover some of our our, our site fees so something that we were thinking about we'd lo we'll love to get feedback from the community on if you think it'd be worthwhile we're also thinking about creating some other fun rules around this like um you know during the tournament you have to you can only pick three heroes you have to submit to the tournament administrator who those three heroes are and you have to use at least one you every hero you have to use at least once and uh you're limited to only one um elite class or above um, no transcendence, and I think the the first idea on tournament rules we we're gonna do like and levels zero through four. We could do five through nine too, but we were trying to make it you know a little more inclusive that way. So um, if someone comes rolling in, well, first off they can't use a dread knight, um, but if someone comes rolling in with a uh, a mythic dragoon, maybe they can only use them a limited number of times. So uh, an idea that we have uh, certainly. I uh, would, would love to get some feedback on if you think it'd be worthwhile. I, I think it'd be a lot of fun. So, okay. All right. Um, let's, what else do we have to, to talk about today? Uh, we wanted to go through, oh yeah, the King Sumo giveaway, of course. 
Okay, oh. so uh, we've stalled long enough that the King Sumo giveaway is... Clearly, I have not set up the expiries. I thought I set it up to expire here at 9.45 p.m. It looks like it's still running. Um, That's funny, because I know I saw you, you had done it. Well, so it looks like it ended... Ooh, oh, oh, let me just hit refresh on my page. Oh, yeah. Okay, never mind. I just didn't refresh on the web page. Boy, I, uh, you guys are getting me only one vodka deep. And apparently, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I'm low performing already. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click the, uh, the ready to award button. Um, so here we go. All right, uh, JeremyHinchy at gmail.com. 22 entries. That's not you, JHW3D, is it? What? Uh, our winner is Jeremy Hinchy at gmail.com. No. Yeah, that's awesome. So, hey, that's what, my number. Or that's not my know, name, though. Yeah, reach out to. Um, again, thank you to, to Sir Worm for that. He, he sent out that along with some of these other items you guys have been seeing in the giveaway recently. So, yeah, send, uh, send me you know a dm with your address and we'll get you your common dark night here thanks to sir worm yeah so, so um i i'll go ahead and email um jeremy respond to i'll and i'll include Nyendorf on it um respond to that email uh just so we don't have uh any dgens out there in the world trying to to pose as jeremy we want to make sure our, our real winner gets it there's a whole bunch oh, yeah. of subscriptions on youtube Big thank you for that. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the hero catalog. What was this hero number again, Nindorf? He's in the chat. Oh, yeah, you he's have... in the chat. Excellent. Yeah. Nice. So while we're waiting here too, I see on our Discord, um, Jimmy Babs asked a question: Would the idea for the dueling, the tournament, be the existing arena or some sort of new rolled idea? Um, and I think you were basically saying that we would just manage sort of our own bracket exactly. in DFK yeah. Arena, correct? Uh, yeah, we would manage our own bracket, and you would use the DFK Arena system to coordinate your battling. And so just like JHW3D and I, we're on Discord at the same time. I'm saying I'm clicking go. He's like, all right, I'm joining this one because there's really no control over uh, scheduling a private match. You kind of get, right. get whoever you get. Um and so it could be a, a, a giant pain if the hero you want to use ends up getting, because there's a two-hour cooldown, ends up getting used up by, you know, some rando, um, you know, jumping <laughs> in and, and blocking all your fun. So, um, yeah, well, it, I think it, it, it could be a lot of work to manage, um, but at the same time, I, I think it could be a, a ton of fun and a, 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 you know a unique way for the the community to to bet some jewel um give a little bit of jewel away to charity give a little jewel to the winners um and uh, go from there absolutely all right so um yeah that that hero number nine dwarf i don't have uh the it should be in the right now yeah bear with me i can look it up um i think if you click it is number do are you ready um, actually, let me go to the website. Um, sure. I'll jump onto the website quick. All right, hero data, hero number, go ahead. Yeah, 197841. All right, so common, Dark Knight. And he went, he boosted, um, yeah, 202 summons. Um, he boosted strength on yep uh, on that so that's right with the the lesser uh enhancement stone so yeah that's that's awesome from a dark knight perspective you have an 88 percent chance on on that primary level up um to go ahead and and to earn that and an 18 percent chance on the secondary level up uh, because it is a dark knight is a pirate or no thief um dark knight yep. thief so that's that's pretty good um and there's also a, an advanced two ability uh, hiding out there in recessive one. Um, oh yeah! And so a nice chance if you're going to summon with this guy down the. And actually, what I like most about him is the 
recessive one on the class is paladin um and so oh, nice. you know if you summoned him with another paladin um jeremy um i guess we're advising you since you're the winner um you know you'd have a really high chance of getting at least an advanced class back so uh, pretty pretty neat thank you sir worm and thank you for the other the giveaways that you're doing over in, in discord that's awesome man yeah uh, i'll uh, i'll get that hero sent out and uh you know don't uh don't judge me the stamina might be empty on this hero <laughs> <laughs> don't judge me i love it um all right um use those uh lesser crystals on every level up oh yeah exactly yeah it's gonna be a strength monster yeah okay um jumping over here onto to youtube uh defiant vixen is asking join part way through did you guys cover the roadmap that was released today oh um, we could do no, that no we have not um so let me see if i can uh bring that up so if you jump over into the defy kingdoms announcement page there is a new roadmap and it said me... they were moving to a bi-weekly yeah go ahead uh yeah update. why did jhw 3d give us the 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 you know the high level rundown what's what's going on there what uh, they release or like you know how every wednesday they kind of push updates yeah uh live or whatever uh they said they're gonna start doing that every two weeks instead of weekly all right I, yeah, I, that kind I don't of makes know. sense then it seemed like instead of a linear roadmap where they're like all right we're gonna do this 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 you know in order they kind of had them in batches. So, because I know that the way they have the, their team broken up mm -hmm. is they have teams who are working on certain things. And so maybe they're all working simultaneously. So it just depends on which team finishes their item first. Yeah. And I see oh, here that not... they have, so I, I have uh, brought up the, the picture of that roadmap. And I, I like that they broke it out into quarters. Um and so they're actually putting some time elements to this. And so they have uh, quarter two here. And, you know, we're sitting at uh, May 18th. Um, and so that's uh, six weeks for them to get through. Well, I guess they have training quests in here. So that's already done. Um, DFK duel, the stone carver, that's already done. And blue and gray eggs hatching. Um, so in the next six weeks, so I, I, this is like the first real information that we have a definitive timeline and, and based on, you know, the definitive timelines that they've released before, I have all the confidence in the world that they're going to hit this in the next six weeks. Yeah, that's really cool. I think, you know, this, this little stint in DFK arena here has kind of got me excited for DFK duel mm -hmm. since I'm again, somewhat magic heavy. Maybe that gives me a chance to to see if my heroes are actually worth you know anything i guess yeah. uh, and obviously you guys know i've i've been uh sitting on a few eggs so i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing oh yeah the lovely little creatures that pop out of those no doubt yeah so then q3 we're looking at land tournaments uh level 10 fishing and foraging achievements i don't know what that means uh level 10 mining and gardening um, okay, so that's interesting. So level 10 fishing and foraging, I'm sure they'll release first. I mean, they're making it clear enough that they're splitting those into two buckets. Uh, travel is its Ooh. own item. Um, yellow, gold, and green pet egg hatching also in Q3. Um, so, and then they have a whole bunch of stuff inside the Fog of War. Uh, training quest 2, non-crafted equipment, crafting equipment um exchange i don't know what exchange means pvp pve and buildings and guilds so i i think that's interesting um you know pvp is something that clearly looks like it's out past q3 i i think that that puts a in pve i you know actually we talked about this in our, our last podcast nine or um I think that actually puts a ton of pressure on their dual system uh, to be highly effective. I would say I'm not um, bullish on the game, or excuse me, I'm not bearish on the game by any stretch yet. But if we get to the unlocked dual, which is going to start happening in August, and dueling is lackluster, 
I would worry about the the tokenomics of the game um, remaining sustainable. So um, just a, a again, not trying to th- throw a rain cloud on this, but um, that's something that just right off the cuff, you know, we've thrown that out there as our our own kind of mental milestone. And you know, the reason for that is we're we're all investing in this. So I mean, these are real life dollars at stake. It's not just uh imaginary video game dollars i mean this this is a real thing no you know you're right and i think i think we as the community have no doubt in their capability to execute you know smart contracts and that sort of development exercises their artwork has been good you know the contracts are great um but now you know we're sort of in uncharted territory when it comes to actual game aspects and game development so uh, i mean I, i think I think you're 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 absolutely right. Until we see the fruits of their labor as far as the game development goes, we don't really know, you mm-hmm. know, how much it's going to pay off. Now, that being said, I think what DFK Arena is teaching us is that there's a possibility that even if um the in game game, if you will, I don't know how else to phrase that, isn't fantastic. The community can and will build upon it and you know they've talked about the through the grant program being able to build apps that can utilize stamina and health and all these things on our nft heroes so i think that actually helps make me a little bit more bullish yet because you know the the team themselves could hit a foul ball or two before the home run and i think the community still has opportunity to help save them so yeah i i'm uh I think I'm in. I think we're in good shape here as a as a community and as a game and as a you know this this space. Mm-hmm. So jumping over our, onto YouTube and you know we got to wrap things up. It's funny. Nydorf and I were talking about well maybe it'll be a fast podcast tonight. <laughs> yeah. Never less than an hour. So um, hopefully you enjoy us rambling along. A um, couple you know clarifications or comments. Um, there's a question on when uh, Crystal Vale Quest and a uh, comment on Poland says they're waiting for the item bridge before launching the CV Quest. Uh, great point, but that's really not highlighted here. And I, I would expect them, based on the old imagery, I thought CV Quests were on that old map um, and relatively early on. So, you know, I, I guess I don't have a lot of information to go off of since they they're not really here right now um but i would expect them to release them you know sooner than later Uh, yeah i think you're right because otherwise you know if you want to burn down that stamina and accumulate items there's almost no reason to have a hero over on crystal bit at the moment Right. right um which i don't know maybe they're maybe they're thinking that too um any thoughts on atlas sky kid said any thoughts on atlas leaving the team atlas was uh one of the the art designers who i believe did a lot of work for uh the map i didn't know that much about him until he jumped on sandwich punch's podcast um a few weeks ago you know i i guess overall what i'd say is um he seemed uh, from what i could tell he seems like he's been in this space a while and um in a in a really neat way he seemed he seemed like um a, a bit of a, a free spirit and you know a powerful artist kind of all rolled into one from what i could sense is that you know he's done a lot of projects on his own before so i i believe he he said a sent out a note saying that he was going off to do his own thing again um so it doesn't, you know, concern me or necessarily shock me. Now, this is based off of, you know, like my five second opinion based on watching one <laughs> video uh, where he was getting interviewed by Sandwich Punch. So um, I don't have a lot of other thoughts on that. Um, I don't know. Do you guys want to comment on that one at all? My two cents would be as this team gets larger and larger, you know, natural attrition will happen to any team. And mm-hmm. I think this is just an, a, a natural attrition sort of thing. So I, I I have zero problems with it. I think it's it's going to happen more and more. And it, it's just a natural thing. People, your life moves you in different directions, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think um, 
that closes out all the uh, Seahawk Heel said, "Am I the only one excited by PVE? No, I'm I'm excited about PVE as well. Um, and I guess maybe uh, you know my comment there would be, are they going to sneak in the the quest for the Eternal Pages, or are we going to be sitting on those forever? It, because those <laughs> are like functionally they're PVE, but maybe they're just a side quest too. So um, I don't know. Those maybe dump all your pages and." gain the jewel you have now and buy them back later because there will be a million I, you know, not financial advice um, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm excited about PvE as well uh, probably more excited I personally am more drawn to PvP um, but yeah that, that should be neat too alright do, uh, do you think the pets will have stats or do you think they'll just be like one effect hmm so uh, I think we'd we'd heard some information at some point that suggested that they're going to have bonuses, and their bonuses could be applied to various areas. Um, you could have profession bonuses, combat bonuses. I'm trying to remember what the other one was. I feel like I remember there being like sort of three categories, and you might, and I think those are somewhat random. Like you, you might be able to hatch a pet that's got like three gardening bonuses, like stacked. Um, and so that would be like, or, you know, and if, you know, and there's the rarity on top of that. So that's, I don't know if it'll necessarily be stats, but I think it'll be bonuses and, you know, quantity of bonuses and then rarity on top of that. that that's kind of the read I'm getting so far. Yeah. Um, another question as I uh, was scrolling up a little bit uh, when I was rambling earlier, um, Guy Kid was asking about more eggs. I assume he was making fun of Nine Dark's ridiculous drop rate. Um, yeah. Well, well done. Um, and uh, Jamie Babineau was asking, "Is uh, JHW an insider?" Um, I, at the very beginning of the podcast, I mentioned uh, right place, right time. We were trading. Uh, we were trading uh, the aforementioned uh, Eternal Scroll pages, whatever they're called, and. I was like, oh, hey, do you want to battle? <laughs> do you want to come on the pod? Um, so, yeah, I guess, you know, we're, we're open to our, our Discord and, and uh, YouTube members jumping on. So um, we'd love to have more people on here. This is, as we were mentioning to, to Sunbear today, this is what makes it fun for us. Yeah, and we've gotten feedback that people like to hear from, you know, us, but not only us, they like to hear from other people in the community. Everybody's got their own, you know, view and take on things. I think... You know, it keeps it fresh, right? It keeps, you know, we we can ramble about the same things over and over again if we're not careful. So it's, uh, you know, we got to have some help, uh, get bringing in some new content, if you will, from our our community. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, uh, guy kid is clarifying here. Um, he's wondering if the Dark Knight with no stamina got an A. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we we need our detectives uh, to go out there and. If I swear to God, if you put, you know, 1% of the energy that was put into, uh, you know, trying to exercise uh, Frisky Fox, we'll find out if, if Nindorf oh. uh, captured a secret egg and if he owes our, um, our, our wonderful winner, Jeremy. Uh, well, I will tell you, he did give me a rune and one or two swift thistles, which are pretty rare in, like, the four quests I did with him. So he <laughs> seems to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, all right. Uh, well, I think uh, we're at the the end. We're at a good stopping point now. So uh, thanks, JW three D, for for jumping on and, and joining us. And uh, thanks for the battle, uh, Nindorf. As always, really appreciate the help. And of course, uh, YouTube, Discord, and all of our audio podcast listeners out there. Thanks for joining us. Uh, please go ahead and uh, subscribe to YouTube if you can. Um, our current, um, I don't know what our, our current count is, but we're getting close to that 300 mark, uh, where we'll be doing an egg giveaway. Uh, so hopefully we can hit that here real soon. Um, this, this hero giveaway gave us a, a nice little boost. So thanks sir worm and, uh, have a great night and take care everyone. Thanks everybody. <laughs>